That wasn't in the speech. But what a beautiful group of young people we have here. Dear Bethany faculty, staff, parents, friends, and family, good evening and welcome to the Bethany Christian School 2014 graduation. What an amazing achievement. Eighth graders, you made it. Congratulations. And I want to congratulate your parents as well for all those wonderful projects you did throughout the years and signed your kids' names to. They were breathtaking. We loved every one of them. <laughs> Seriously, parents and family, your loving sacrifices throughout these years have really paid off. Look at these lovely young ladies and gentlemen up here this evening. You know, eighth graders a month ago, Mr. Luganville approached me about giving this speech, and I graciously accepted it. But a few days ago, I was pacing back and forth in my room thinking, Lord, what did I get myself into? <laughs> so many things to say, so many words. But you know what? As all those things are going through my mind, this spark of joy popped in at the same time. You see, this is going to be the first time that I actually get to talk to you while you are quietly listening. <laughs> And then another thought came into my mind. There's no clock up here. And then another thought came into my mind. I can tell your parents tonight exactly what I think about you. <laughs> you look scared. Don't be. You know, uh, every great speech, like this one, <laughs> needs uh, a, a quote of philosophy, a good philosopher. And so, I want to quote the famous philosopher T.A. Swift. And this philosopher said, I knew you were trouble when you walked in. <laughs> trouble, trouble, trouble. <laughs> okay, I'll get inside. You made it. You're here. You finished those math tests, you finished that dreaded science fair project, you wrote those English composition papers, you did that castle project, and that history collage, and you passed my Bible class with those copies of copies of copies. <laughs> I know that most, if not all of you, are ready to cut the ropes and set sail for you. No matter what your memories are, no matter how enjoyable they are, you're young, you're pioneers, and you, you're ready to go on into boldly frontiers, aren't you? But you know, before you go, I want to give you a few precious jewels. I had the opportunity to talk to some of your teachers and administrators and ask them to write some reflections. And I wanted to share those with you tonight. These teachers and faculty have very fond memories of you. And I pray that you have fond memories of them as well. They've named you by name. So, there's no protecting the innocent. Well, what am I saying? None of you are innocent. <laughs> so here we go. We're going to go right down the list. As soon as I get a drink of water. <laughs> Mrs. Heal says of Arvig, Arvig, you are a sweet young lady with a gentle spirit who makes your contribution in a very meaningful way. <coughs> Miss Stalby says of you, there's a whole lot of feistiness in one little package. <laughs> Mrs. Seward prays, Lord, may Arvig be filled with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. Mr. Lugendiel writes, Arvid, you are a strong and steadfast young woman. Continue to be so. Remember the promise of Jesus. Listen to and put into practice his words. And you'll be like the wise man who built his house on the rock 
which can survive every kind of trial. Ryan. <laughs> Effie writes, Ryan would tell me that he loved me all through the year at various times. <laughs> and what my prayer is, according to Effie, is that you would share that same love of Christ unashamedly and boldly with everyone. Ms. Kikuyu says, Ryan has a very tender heart under all the swag. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Ambrose writes, Ryan means new beginnings, not held back. No fear. Someone who knows the King of Kings. Ms. Spinelli, Mrs. Spinelli prays, Father, I pray Ryan may acquire a disciplined and a prudent life, doing what is right and just and fair. Eric. <laughs> Mrs. Heal writes, Eric, you were blessed with a fun sense of humor. May you use it to be a wonderful <laughs> asset in your life. Mrs. Stalby says, Eric, if your box boat had been just a little bigger, <laughs> it would have floated. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Seward prays, Lord, teach Eric perseverance in all that he does, and help him especially to run the perseverance, the race marked out for him. And Mr. Luganbuehl writes of Eric, you have a big, gentle heart. Don't hide it. Remember that Jesus Christ, the most powerful man that ever lived, described himself as being gentle and humble. Effie says of Billy, Billy was a naturally cool guy that everyone wanted to hang around. My prayer for him is that his light would shine before everyone, that they may glorify the Father of the Lord. Mr. Lugenbuehl writes of Billy, You're like a fast ship on a wide ocean, with strong winds steady to take you great places. But to get there, you'll need to be mindful of the small things, like faith the size of the smallest mustard seed, or the still small voice of God speaking to your heart. Take heed of those little things, and God will guide you to great places. Mrs. Ambrose says to Billy, your name means nations. Walk in the way of the Lord and win the nations for Christ. Mrs. Spinelli prays, Lord, please instill in Billy a soul that follows hard after thee, one that clings passionately to you. Mrs. Kukuyu says of Christian, he's a true comer. <laughs> Mr. Lukeville writes, Christian, God has given you the capacity to understand the most important things in life. There is a great deal of wisdom that goes far beyond mere head knowledge. And it's all yours for the asking. If you need wisdom, says the Word of God, ask our generous God, and He will give it to you. Epi says, I was blessed to have Christian in my small group this year. He would ask questions and didn't care what others thought. My prayer for him is that he would continue to pursue the Lord and ask those hard questions because our Lord has all the answers. Miss Spinelli prays, Lord, teach Christian perseverance in all he does and help him especially to run with perseverance the race marked out for him. Miss Kikuyu says of Jordan, he's going to totally take off in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Dolly says, Jordan said that I had swag. <laughs> he would know. Mrs. Seward prays, Lord, please instill in Jordan a soul that follows hard after thee, one that clings passionately to you. And Miss Spinelli prays, God, please cultivate in Jordan the ability to show true humility toward all. Of Renee, Mrs. Ambrose says, Renee, my lamb. <laughs> <laughs> this
This girl really has my heart. She was quiet and reserved, smart, but kind of shy, and surprisingly had a kooky sense of humor. <laughs> Her name means renewed, joyful spirit, and she is a breath of fresh air and brings joy to all parts of BCS. Mrs. Kukuya says of Renee, she's a mature, quality person. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Lugenbuehl writes of Renee, you lead by example. Whether you are aware of it or not, people are watching how you live your life. And Epi says, Renee is the kind of student every youth pastor wants in their youth group. <laughs> she's loving, respectful, hardworking, and genuine. And Mrs. Watson says of Renee that she shows the quality of availability. She adjusts her own personal responsibilities around others' needs. Mrs. Kukuya says of Maggie, she's consistently happy and loving. Mrs. Hill writes, Maggie, experiencing your joyful spirit, servant attitude, and genuine smile always added a touch of brightness to my day. Mrs. Watson writes, Maggie shows the quality of truthfulness. She earns trust by accurately reporting the facts. And Mrs. Seward prays, Lord, grant that Maggie's life may be marked by prayerfulness, that she may learn to pray in spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers. Mrs. Ambrose says of Candace, your name means glittering. When I think of how Candace has matured, it warms my heart. She was a mere shadow hidden in the corners. I see Isaiah 63, I see Isaiah 62, verse 3 for her. You will be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord. She sparkles and she doesn't even know it. Mrs. Kakuya says of Candace, she is deeply sensitive and kind. Mr. Luganbuehl writes of Candace, to Candace. Be confident in Jesus. Always remember what Jesus said. It is the meek who inherit the earth, not the aggressors. And Mrs. Watson says that Candace shows the quality of being respectful. She honors others and their property, and as a result, as a result of by abiding in Christ. And Mrs. Spinelli prays, may the God of hope grant Candace a heart that overflows with hope and hopefulness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mrs. Ambrose says of Melanie, her name means divine spark. She has the ability to set others on fire for God. She grew responsive to the word and soon peace like a river began to soothe her soul. What a joy to see this expressed so beautifully in piano and in song. Mrs. Seward prays, Lord, help Melanie not to be like others around her. But let her be alert and self-controlled in all she does. Miss Stalby says, Melanie always has something to say about something. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Watson says that Melanie shows the quality of genuine repentance. Epi says, I was blessed by Shamami. Shamomi? Shamomi, <laughs> when she would help lead worship during other during our chapel, my prayer for her is that she would use her gifts and talents for God's glory. And Mrs. Heal writes, Melanie, when I think of you, three words come to mind: energy, relationships, and personality. As you refine these attributes, God is going to use you greatly. Owen. Mr. Lugenbuehl writes to Owen, you're like Gideon who wondered how he could possibly accomplish everything God expected of him. But God promised to be with Gideon, telling to him, telling him to go in the strength you have, and he would do the rest. Or like God told the Apostle Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. God has given all you need to succeed so you can go forward with confidence. Right? Mrs. Stalby says of Owen, I'm always wondering what he's thinking behind that smile. 
<laughs> there it is. <laughs> Mrs. Watson says that Owen shows the quality of discretion. He shows the ability to avoid words, actions, and attitudes which could result in undesirable consequences. Oh, I wish I had that gift. Boy, don't we all? Mrs. Spinelli prays, may Owen always be strong and courageous in his character and in his actions. Shalom. Mrs. Ambrose says of Shalom, you are talented, passionate, vibrant, fiercely independent, strong, and bold. You have a strong sense of justice and truth, and you've only skimmed the surface of your God-given talents and gifts. Once you really understand and believe who you are in Christ, you will be a world changer, no doubt about it. Mr. Luganville writes to Shalom, God's called you to be a leader. It's who you are. You will lead. Never forget the power of servant leadership that you've learned here at BCS. Jesus said, the greatest among you will be your servant. And Mrs. Heal writes, your willingness to help Whenever called upon has been a blessing to our PTF and to our BCS staff. Mrs. Stalvey says, Shalom is a bold fighter for truth, justice, and the American way. Oh wait, that's Wonder Woman. <laughs> Same thing. End quote. Mrs. Seward prays, Lord, teach Shalom the secret of being content in any and every situation through him who gives her strength. And Miss Spinelli prays, Lord, please clothe Shalom with the virtue of compassion. Mrs. Leon has something for all of you who were her precious little first graders. She writes to Arvig, Ryan, Eric, Renee, Maggie, Melly, and Owen, I remember what it was like when I was taller than you. <laughs> <laughs> I am so proud that you have stuck together through the years here at Bethany. I want you to know that I will keep each of you in my thoughts and prayers as you go on to high school. Good luck and many blessings. And remember Joshua 1 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you 